All I can say is it's a good thing I ended up a liaison officer. Oh, uh, yeah. A paper pusher who spends her days getting a fluorescent tan and her nights reading files for corporate crime. You are a lucky duck. Sure am. Especially when I can help you do your job. Oh, well, how are you going to do that? Well, here are the short strokes. Bahamian bank account, $26 million, Jack Dolman. Dolman, how do I know that name? He was murdered three years ago in a parking garage underneath his office. I remember. The file came down to us about a year ago. There was nothing to go on. Until this. Well, how's this relevant? You didn't pay a lot of attention to the whole Enron thing, did you? I saw the girls of Enron and Playboy. <laughs> well, those women aren't the only thing that have been uncovered. Corporate crime did a forensics accounting of the Dolman estate. They have no idea how we came up with $26 million. At least not legally. Well, exactly. Dolman was a broker to a lot of high-ticket investors. All of them reported losses in 1999. So I take it part of that loss came from unwittingly contributing to the Jack Dolman retirement fund? Hey! Hey! Hey, you want to keep it down out there? How Street, huh? Well, it'll be a nice change going after a different class of scumbag. That. This guy's summer home, six million. His personal worth is estimated at seventy-three million dollars. That one of Dolman's clients? No, he's a uniform on Hastings. What do you think? Smart ass. How much do you lose? He took a two million dollar bath on some tech stocks. At least that's where Jack said the money went. <laughs> seventy-three million. How long you been on the job, McCormick? All told, fourteen years. How much you save? I put in the pension fund every year. So, nothing? Well, I figure I've got a few years to deal with that. Jack Dolman handled the personal accounts for a number of House Street players. Between them, they make more money than Bolivia. You think they're going to kill someone over a million dollar loss? You know, some of these rich bastards are some of the cheapest people alive. One of them finds out that Dolman was ripping them off. They sue him. They don't kill him. Sergeant McCormick, uh, Vaughn Patterson is here to see you. OK. I knew about Jack's dirty little secret. Also knew the bastard was scheming for me. When did you become aware of this? I believe it was just over a year ago. Did you take any action? Why? Why not? You reported investment losses of over $4 million in the two years leading up to Dolan's death. Is that not true? Except for the fact that it was a theft and not a loss, yes. And you weren't inclined to do anything about it? I consulted my attorneys. After Jack's death, my only course of action was to try and bleed his wife, Audrey, for the money. So why didn't you do that? She was a friend of mine, both her and that thief of a husband. Don't ever do business with your friends, Sergeant. Even if Jack Dolman wasn't a thief, was probably one of the worst market readers I ever met. You went to visit Jack the day that he was murdered. Why? We had business to discuss. Nothing out of the ordinary. So where were you the night that Jack was killed? I was at a charity gala at the Pan Pacific. Breast cancer, I believe. Malcolm Perry of The Sun took my picture there. I'll have my girl fax it over if you need proof of my whereabouts. Mr. Patterson, I, I can't believe you're not more upset about this. Four million dollars is a considerable loss. After Jack was murdered, I moved my money to another brokerage. The way they were able to jump from high tech to precious metals, well, it eased the, the pain considerably. Besides, life's too short to worry about money. But it sure doesn't seem like any of Dolma's clients are losing sleep over the losses. Financially or personally? Either. 
have the vegetable soup. I'll have the uh, the special, please. Me too. Living large. <laughs> well, isn't that cozy? Interesting definition of therapy. <laughs> so what's the news? Well, it's good and bad. Bad first. Do you think those two are talking about us? Let them. What's the bad news? Uh, the bad is I don't get to see you anymore. So the good is? The good is I'm recommending a full reinstatement into the police force. Thank you. There'll be a notation on your record, but that's it. You don't have to see me professionally anymore. What you do with that is up to you. Hey, you want to answer me something? What's that? Who matters in this world? Really matters. What are you talking about? Who makes a real difference to the way we live? <laughs> Midlife crisis hitting you a little early, Len? You know who I think matters? Teachers, firemen, scientists, doctors, cops. Receptionists? Receptionists. You know, all I'm asking is, what do these people do to deserve the money they have? You know, I bust my butt. I put my life on the line. What? What's so funny? When was the last time you put your life on the line? Ordering in the cafeteria? It's, it's, a, it's a figure of speech. Do you know what the average teacher salary caps out at? 60 grand. A firefighter, maybe the same thing. You want to meet Jack Dolman, you had to bring 500 grand to the table. Now, people like that, they just don't live on my planet. 500 grand? Where did you get that? It's right there in the literature he handed out to potential investors. Well, I think I might have something here. Take a look at this. Look at these names. Jeff and Jen Hawkins, Sid Duckworth, Matt and Esther Johnson. Yeah, they're all clients of Dolman's. Jeff is a petrocan dealer. Sid owns a small landscaping firm. Not exactly the kind of people who have 500 grand kicking around. No, not one of them had a portfolio of more than 50 grand. And let me guess, Jack Dolman siphoned their money as well. Every cent. And unlike the people we were talking to earlier, that's the kind of loss that's going to matter to these folks. I think we just found ourselves another batch of suspects. Oh, thank God for normal people. Doesn't look like they made a killing on the market. Well, they aren't exactly Jeff and Jen Getty, are they? What is that, a Hyundai? You a car guy, Harper? No, not especially. Hi. You guys are a little early. Oh, it's okay. Just come on in. You didn't hear about the food? Well, no, Mrs. Hawkins. You, you are Matt and Esther's friends, aren't you? No. Hey, babe. Somebody here already? It ain't that old horn dog sit already, is it? <laughs> oh, I was just getting the playroom ready. Wow. Esther never said you're quite so good looking. Uh, it's not them, Jeff. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hawkins, we're police officers. I'm Sergeant Allie McCormick. Sergeant Len Harper. The neighbors never said anything, did they? About what? We're here to ask you a few questions about Jack Dolman. I believe you knew him? Yeah, we both knew him. His wife, Audrey, as well. What is this about? Let the games begin. See it. The horn dog. Take a look at this, Jeffrey. That should get the old engines revving, eh? <laughs> Sid Duckworth. You the new members? They're police officers, Sid. Hi. Oh. I should get these into the fridge. <laughs> Look, I can see that you're uh, having a party or, or something, so I'll just get right to the point. Did you invest a sizable amount of money with Jack Dolman? Yeah. A few years back before Jack was murdered. We should take a bath on that. My school board has a good mutual fund. I told Jeff we should have left it there. How'd you meet Jack Dolman? Oh, he's in the lifestyle. Lifestyle. We're what some people call swingers, Mr. Harper. We should attend for the kids. Hello, sweetheart. So, is that what you meant by normal people, Harper? <laughs>
Yeah. We met Jack and Audrey through an ad we placed in a contact magazine. Jack replied, and um, we met them and hit it off. Everybody in the group liked them, especially Audrey. She even came on her own for a while after Jack was killed. <laughs> any idea why she stopped attending? We married someone who wasn't into the lifestyle. Did Jack handle the investments for anybody else, Jane? Everyone in here? You still talking about Jack? Mr. Hawkins, were you aware that Jack Dolman stole your money and probably everyone else's? Stole? What are you talking about? Well, Jack didn't make bad investments. He just took your money and hid it in the bank account in the Bahamas. <sighs> Remember what I said about getting to bed with friends? Financially. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say, Bill. The bigger the cushion. <laughs> Go give her, Sydney. <laughs> Hey, Sergeant, you sure you don't want to come downstairs and search the premises? No, you, uh, you go too. Oh. Okay, Harper, uh... I'm just gonna go downstairs and make sure we haven't missed anything. I'll take you. You work out? Yeah, uh, just a bit. Whoa, it shows. Yeah, I do a couple things, but mostly Stairmaster. It's, uh, it's pretty good, a couple push-ups. If you and your wife ever want it, Join us? Um, no, I don't think she'd be inclined. She wouldn't. Interesting. Just thinking about it yesterday. I haven't seen so much jewelry on someone since B.A. Baracus. Who? <laughs> Eighteen. You watch the Eighteen? Only every night. You know what else? I was thinking we should take a closer look at that group. Wow! Didn't think you were so adventurous. Suspects, Harper. Suspects. Yeah. Well, I don't think so. You know, they seem relatively philosophical about the loss. No, I'm not talking about the money. I mean, considering what Jack and his wife were up to, lust and jealousy seem like pretty good motives to me. Well, I saw a lot of lust. I'm not too sure about the jealousy part. Oh, come on. Jack was screwing someone's wife, and someone didn't like it. Different folks, different strokes, right? We've been married for seven years. You've heard about the itch, right? Well, Bill had it. <coughs> yeah, hadn't sown enough wild oats, I guess. Well, as you can imagine, my initial reaction wasn't good. I felt like we were betraying our vows. But I decided that if I didn't try it, I was probably going to lose him. So, about four years ago, we went to a couples party out in Langley. It was one of the most terrifying and exciting moments of my life. <laughs> Almost had to drag her in from the car and, uh... No, of course, I can't drag her away. <laughs> can you imagine a world where you don't have to hide your deepest desires? You're allowed to flaunt them? As a woman, you're always the center of attention. It's an incredibly empowering feeling. So was this party in Langley where you met the current members of the group? No, we met Jeff and Jan at a convention in Las Vegas. We hit it off there. Did you hit it off with Jack Dolman and his wife? I always had a soft spot for Jack. He wasn't the typical sort of man you'd meet at one of these things. Oh, why's that? Rich and powerful man amid a special kind of aphrodisiac. <laughs> Does this make you jealous? Uh, yeah, jealousy is an emotion, and, uh, you know, emotions can be controlled, so... So does this make you jealous? He didn't say that. Bill is comfortable with the lifestyle. If he wasn't, we wouldn't be going to parties at Jen and Jeff's. Isn't that right, Bill? Right. That's, that's right. Even though we're Christians, I've never felt the sharing of affection to be contrary to the Lord's word. God believes in the pleasure of sex. Since none of us are immune to temptation, I would rather yield to it than engage in deceit. The way I see it, if we stay with one partner forever, we're bound to cheat. And to cheat is to lie. As a couple, we share everything, every experience, good or bad. That's true love. And you feel the same way, Esther? I sure do. Did you ever sleep with Jack Dolman? No. Why not? He just wasn't my kind of person. Did you sleep with Jack's wife? Yes. Audrey, she was a pistol. Multi-orgasmic. 
takes a licking and keeps on... That's going. enough, Mr. Duckworth. So you slept with her? As often as I could. Did you ever sleep with Jack? Uh, no, she wasn't a part of the group then. I was there with my first wife. Oh, where's she now? She passed away three years ago. Uh, I'm sorry. It broke my heart. But at least I found my. She took to the whole thing like a fish to water. I sure did. <laughs> Where'd you two meet? Uh, through an agency. One trip to Thailand was all that it took. Were you upset about Jack's death? I never cared for the son of a bitch anyway. Why is that? Thought he was better than us. At least that's the sense I got. Did anyone else in the group think the same way? Maybe. But as long as he brought Audrey, that was okay by us. I'm looking forward to meeting this Audrey. <laughs> Keep it in your pants, sailor. Oh, looks like you're going to get your chance. I'm Audrey Winston. Jack Dolman was my husband. Hi. He found something about his murder. Well, that's what we're trying to determine. Uh, Mom, how long is this going to take? That shouldn't be too long. I'll wait then. Jack did that. $26 million. You weren't aware of any of this? Jack handled all of our affairs. It certainly didn't come up when we settled his estate. And you think one of the people he stole from may have killed him? Yeah, it's a possibility. Uh, but there is something else we're considering. Uh, Audrey, we're aware of the fact that you and your husband were swingers. That's certainly no secret. We talked to a few members of the group. Um, it seems that Jack wasn't exactly their favorite. That might be true, but I doubt very much one of them will kill Jack in cold blood. Well, what if it wasn't cold-blooded? What if it was in a fit of jealous rage? That's highly unlikely. Why do you say that? Jealousy only happens when someone is doing something behind someone's back. Everyone at a swinging party knows why they're there. It's all mutual. Um, you sure about that? Because a couple people said that Jack was pushy and aggressive. So maybe one of the husbands found that a little hard to take. I don't mean to be rude, but you don't understand very much about sex, do you, Sergeant Harper? <laughs> um, I have an idea about it. Well, they're not very much about our kind of sex. You should have seen Matt's eyes when someone was with Esther. You should have seen Jeff's, all of them. When someone was sleeping with their wives, they weren't feeling jealous. What were they feeling? Pride. There's some kind of mistake here? No, they came for you. <clears throat> Just to let you know, I'm thinking of you, Leanne. Secret admirer? Something like that. We're hearing some things about Jack Dolman that don't exactly fit in with your portrayal of the group as paradise on Earth. Why don't you just let the poor man rest in peace? Well, as soon as I find out how he was murdered, he can rest any way he wants. Did Jack Dolman ever do anything that would have pissed somebody off? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a yes. There were a couple incidents. Finally. What were they? Well, they don't amount to murder. There was a couple who attended our parties for a short time, Vince Mortensen and his girlfriend, Shasta. And what happened? Audrey came on to Vince, and Vince wasn't interested. Jack got really upset. Jack got upset because Vince wouldn't sleep with his wife. Exactly. Well, before anybody could do anything, Jack was just beating the shit right out of Vince. You know, which is kind of surprising. Considering that Vince is, was 20 years younger. But uh, Jack just beat the hell right out of him. So is Vince the type to take that sort of thing lying down? I don't know. Never saw him again. They never attended another party. When did this happen? Uh, I guess a month before Jack was killed. Um, could you tell me to point me to Colt's pod? Thanks. Hi. I am looking for a Sergeant Harper or a McCormick. That's me. After the fight, we never went back to that group again. But you went to others? Yeah, uh, for a while. But then Vince left me. 
Now I'm free to do whatever I want. But you never went back to Jen and Jeff's? No. Why? Um, I don't know. Uh, the people at Jen and Jeff's, um, they were all old and wrinkly. Um, not exactly a turn on. Did Vince and uh, Jack have any other encounters after the fight? He wanted to, but I don't remember any. And he was pissed off about getting beat up in front of everybody? Not just that. Um, Jack kind of found out where we lived, and he'd call me all the time. Trips to Vegas, fur coats, anything I wanted, if I'd sleep with him. Did Vince know about these calls? Did you ever sleep with Jack? I would never sleep with a man my husband didn't approve of. And that's kind of another reason why we're not together anymore. Vince wouldn't approve of anyone. Got to the point where I couldn't leave the house on my own. I couldn't live like that. So where's your husband now? X, please. He works at Station 63. And take it from me, firemen are highly overrated. <laughs> I think that when you marry a nympho, all your dreams will come true. Take it from me, they don't. Is that why you're separated? Yeah. I tried it, but I just wasn't into sharing it. Especially with a guy like Jack Dolan, right? Especially with anyone. Hey, you know, I think they're giving away some balloons over there. All right. I heard that uh, Dolman kept after your wife, even after you two fought. Now, I know somebody does something like that to my wife. I'm going to get pissed. I got plenty pissed at Jack Dolman, but I sure didn't kill him. But he beat you up pretty bad. So what? So he beat you up. He was trying to screw you up. When wife. was he killed? July 14th. July 14th. I was on the back of engine 402 racing to a three alarm on Renfrew. After fighting a fully involved for several hours, I was taken to Burnaby Journal for treatment of smoke inhalation and dehydration. Now, if I'd have run into Jack Doman that night, his mother could have kicked the crap out of me. Okay. Nice car. You know who your mom is? Yeah, she's out with Phil, dad number four. <laughs> it's okay, I like this one. Oh, good. Well, could you tell her I came by? I'd like to talk to her. Yeah. You uh, figured out who killed Jack yet? <laughs> I'd just like to talk to her. What's the point though, right? I mean, why does it matter who killed him? Why do you say that? Come on, I'm not a kid. I know what he did to her. Oh yeah? Wanna fill me in? I knew about those parties. He made her go to them. It was disgusting. Did she say that? No, I overheard her talking about it with Vaughn. Vaughn? Uh, some guy my dad used to work with. Uh, he and my mom saw each other after Jack died. Mm. I'm beginning to think you were right all along. This might not have anything to do with the swing club. Reason? Oh, I was talking to Audrey's kid. He told me that she started going out with Vaughn Patterson after Jack was murdered. Maybe they're not the best of friends. Jack did take $4 million off him. Yeah, and then Vaughn makes a play for his wife. Savalas. So, okay, calm down. Just lock your door. Yeah. I'll come by. Right now. Everything all right? Leanne. Dr. Walker. She said she heard some weird noises outside her apartment. I'll go check it out. Well, you could call a couple uniforms. I think I can handle this. Well, see you in the morning, McCormick. Back to the trouble and strife. Harper, what do you really think of this? you believe all those people? What are you talking about? Jan and Jeff Hawkins and the rest of them. I don't know. Look, just... Take it from somebody who's been married since he was 22. What they're doing doesn't seem half bad. I'm kidding. Have a good night. Night. This is the best money can buy. Was there was somebody out in the hall that sounded like they were gonna get in? Yeah, if two deadbolts here, it'd be tough. But they could. Yeah, really motivated. But I don't think you have anything to worry about. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming over. Sure. 
Why'd you do that? I shouldn't have. I, I didn't say that. So you think I shouldn't do this? I didn't uh, say that either. Okay. your drink, all right? I'm driving. I better not. You don't have to go. I'd rather you didn't. Well, you don't want me to go any further, but you don't want me to go? It's not that hard to understand, is it? I just don't want to go too far too fast. Then I should probably leave. Please don't. Just stay with me. It's really good you uh, make it different. No, man, it's the same lasagna I've been making since we met. Oh, well, it's, it's uh, still really good. Thanks, son. So, the kids are watching their video. You said you were going to tell me about the case you're working on. Yeah, it's, well, it's something that I, 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 I don't know, you, you might, well, I find it's, it's interesting. What is? Well, we've been working on the murder of someone who belonged to a swing club. This isn't about dancing, is it? No, no, they, they swap partners. You know, I would have thought that people would do something like that, but they'd be a bunch of freaks, but they're not. They're, they're as normal as you and me. I don't think I go that far. Oh, you'd be surprised. This woman, Jen, she and her husband kind of run the place. She's very nice. You'd like her. Uh-huh. In fact, all of them, they seem to be the kind of people that, uh, well, the kind of people that we'd really like. Ben, are you suggesting that we join them? You really had me going. I knew I should never have let you go see the ice storm. So, why don't you tell me about you and Vaughn? I was wondering how long it would take you to find out about us. We dated for a while after I lost Jack. You should have told me about that. It was just a short affair. Why does it matter? Well, because every piece of information matters, especially when we're trying to solve a murder that's three years old. Then I'm sorry. I certainly didn't mean to hide it from anyone. So Jack and Vaughn, is there any animosity between them? Of course there was. Vaughn always had eyes for me. It was like he was obsessed. Jack didn't like that. Anything beyond that? His brokers and traders were always competing. Jack used to tell me the only reason Vaughn was after me was because Jack had me. But I knew he was wrong. Yeah, how's that? Well, if Vaughn didn't really have the hots for me, then why would he date me after Jack passed away? You know, get back the money that Jack owed him? And none of us knew Jack was stealing money. You know, Vaughn may have started seeing me because he liked me. Wouldn't be the first time. It's not as though I've ever had any trouble attracting men. Audrey, can I ask you something? What's an intelligent woman like you doing in a wife swapping club? It made me feel good. Your son told me Jack forced you to do it. When were you talking to Stuart? Was he telling the truth? No. And why does he think that? I should have hid them better, but we had some photographs Stuart found him. 
told him it was Jack's idea. He wasn't of the age to understand this was something Mom wanted. Well, I guess I'm with Stuart, because uh, I know I could never, uh, you know, with a bunch of other people. It's all right. You and I are different people. You're single, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Sing anyone? Not at the moment. You see, I could never do what you're doing. Live my life alone? I'd rather be dead. There's a big difference between being alone and being lonely. Yeah, well, that's something I never intend to find out. I need someone to make me feel special. Make me feel like I count. That someone is two or three or even four people, well, so much the better. I don't mean to be judgmental, but don't you find that just a bit demeaning? I don't expect you to understand. But from my point of view, having no one to love me would be much worse. Wakey, wakey, the sun is shining. Get up and put the coffee on. What do you want to do? I better get to work. Even though it's the first day of being boyfriend, girlfriend? Come on and get some coffee. Sweetie. Do you want to hold up for a sec? Sure, what's up? I don't think we've moved right to boyfriend girlfriend yet, have we? Oh, what do you call someone who stays over at a girl's house and she lets him? I mean, I'd say they were a couple. You're moving a little fast here. Am I? If you didn't want to get involved with me, why did you stay over? Well, there's involved and then there's involved. You mean you would have slept with me without even caring about me? You would do that? I care. I just don't know if I'm ready for anything long term. That's sick. It's just that I... No, that's sick! I mean, that kind of thing might work with that little slut that you used to screw, but that doesn't work with me. I'm just gonna go. What kind of woman do you think I am? You sent me flowers. You called me over here. You asked me to stay. So you thought that I'd be up for a one-night stand? I'm just gonna go. I saved your career! And I thank you for that. So I just wanted to tell you that uh, your husband didn't kill Jack Dolman. Oh. Okay. Thought you might like to know that. Uh, do you have any idea who else may have disliked Jack? I don't. You know, I only saw those people a couple of times. Right. right. So, uh, no idea. <laughs> Is this the real reason he has me here? To tell me my ex-husband didn't kill someone? You and Jack Dolman weren't really friends, were you? We got along just fine. Yes, yeah, sure you did, but it wasn't really Jack you wanted to be close to, was it? So Audrey finally told you about us. Uh-huh. Yeah, she said that you were obsessed with her. Obsessed? Mm-hmm. Audrey really thinks she's something, doesn't she? Talk to more than a couple of men who think so. You want the truth, Sergeant? I was seeing Audrey after Jack died because I wanted to buy Jack's company. I figured who's more vulnerable than a widow? Unfortunately, she didn't want to sell. Look, hey, even if that's true, it doesn't mean you didn't kill him. It just means your plan failed. I talked to his secretary. You were the only one of his clients who visited him that day, and she said you left angry. You did right. I was angry. I tendered an offer to buy his company. He called me in to discuss it. I thought he was serious. And he wasn't? Five minutes into my pitch, his kid shows up. Jack says the meeting's off. He's taking Stewart to basketball practice. What time was it? I don't remember. But it was dark when I left. 
Now, are you finished with me, yeah. Sergeant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, you want to do this alone? Yeah, I think it's best. Sergeant McCormick. Audrey, thanks for coming by. You wanted to talk to me. Well, no, actually, it's your son I wanted to talk to. You can have a lawyer if you want. I don't think I need one. Um, what did you want to ask me about? I, I need to ask you about how you felt about Jack. Um, my mom loved him. I, he was an all right guy, I guess. An all right guy? Even though he forced your mom to go to those parties? Yeah, I didn't like that. No. But still, you guys did some regular father and son type stuff together, didn't you? Once in a while, huh? Yeah. You saw Jack the day he was killed, right? Vaughn Patterson said he saw you at your stepdad's office. You went there to get a right to basketball practice? Oh, um, yeah. <clears throat> I remember that. How come you never went? Vaughn said that he saw you two leave the office together, heading to the parking garage, going to Jack's car. But the thing is, Jack didn't even get his keys in the ignition before he was killed. What happened to you? I didn't make it to the car with Jack. We got into a fight. Oh, yeah? What about? About what he was doing to my mom. And what did he say about that? He said that those parties were my mom's idea. She wanted to go. He was just going along to make her happy. It was like bullshit. So after you fought, you just left the garage? And where did you go? Just out. I... Where? It doesn't matter where I went. I wasn't there. Look, Stuart, whatever happened, I know you were just trying to protect your mom. If I had a son, I'd want him to do the same thing. Hey, look, thing. I didn't do anything, okay? You didn't leave the garage, did you? <laughs> Not right away. You went into his car with him, didn't you? No, no, no. Stuart. Do you know how many times I've had this conversation with people in my life? Murderers, rapists, victims. I know when people are lying to me, Stuart. It's my job, but I know that you're lying to me right now. Look, you know, I'm sure that you didn't even mean to kill him. If, if you had a chance to do it over again, you probably would have... He was turning my mom into a whore, all right? Did you see the pictures of the old guy screwing her? She never would have done those things if, if he had made her, all right? And I stopped him. And I had to. She was my mom, right? We'll be holding Stuart for a while, Mrs. Dolman. For what? For killing your ex-husband. Stuart? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was protecting you. Uh, apparently, he believed your little story about being forced into those parties, so... God. Yeah. Well, he was only 16 when it happened, so... They'll probably go easy on him. What happened? What happened was that while you were traipsing around trying to find anybody to need you, you completely ignored the one person who did. That's what happened, Mrs. Dolman. I'm sorry. Oh, Stuart. Shasta, Sonia? Sonia, Shasta. Hi. Please. <laughs>